What's up YouTube? This is the Action Figure Grader, also known as John, coming back with one more fun video. Uh, I thought today I would do a quick look at the G.I. Joe figure subscription service uh, figure that I, I really liked a lot. His name is Widescope. It's a 2.0 figure, so this came out about six years ago. And the reason I wanted to show this is because I'm, I'm going to be selling this on eBay. It's actually for sale right now on eBay. And uh, the reason I wanted to talk about him is because I, I think it's, number one, I love the figure, and I, I'll, I'll talk more about him in a second. But I also thought that I would kind of segue that into a discussion about buying on eBay, some of the pitfalls that I've uh, done over the years, things that you can do to avoid bad purchases and not waste money on bad figures. And so uh, we'll, we'll get into all that in a little while, but let's, let's talk about the figure first. Widescope is uh, a uh, this is a, a, an updated figure from a 1991 figure uh, that came out uh, during the kind of the very end of the of the vintage run of GI Joe and uh, it's it's been nicely updated as you can see he's a kind of a SWAT team canine handler uh, it comes with uh, his dog which I think is named like Chester let's let's see I've forgotten already hmm hmm I found it at some point online, and now I cannot remember his name. This is a really great video, by the way, if you can't tell. But anyway, uh, Widescope, uh, he's got a dog that I guess he's super in love with. He's got a, a, a riot shield, uh, a couple of weapons, you know, kind of a, a, an Uzi-type grease gun, as well as a, a larger AR-15-style rifle. Uh, he's got the nice SWAT hat as you can see there, as well as a gas mask. And so let's zoom in a little bit closer so you can get a better look at him. I love the urban camouflage. He reminds me a lot of the 1987 Shockwave figure. Uh, for those of you, sorry about the glare, for those of you who are fam more familiar with some of the uh, the figures from the original kind of early run of, of G.I. Joe. But at, at first when I saw him uh, for sale, I thought that he was kind of an updated Shockwave figure, but apparently there was another figure made in 1991, which was well after I should have been playing with action figures, so I, did, I didn't even know about him. But luckily they went ahead and, and updated him for the figure subscription service. And the figure subscription service, for those of you that do not know, I think they're on 7.0 right now, so the seventh year of uh, this service. Basically, you pay a, an amount up front to the G.I. Joe Club, and uh, th they will send you, through the course of the year, 12 figures. And it also comes with one additional figure for free at the end of the year. So um, I think this year, or p potentially next year, are the last is, is going to be the last of the run for uh, the figure subscription service. There just has not been enough demand for uh, th these figures, which is unfortunate. But the G.I. Joe franchise itself is kind of dead in the water right now without any movies or comics or, uh, uh, excuse me, there are comics, but there's no uh, TV shows to tie into it. So kids today, they, they don't care about, they don't care about G.I. Joe, but I do. I certainly do. I am 41 and I remember G.I. Joe very well. So I've, I've got a pretty, pretty large G.I. Joe, both modern and vintage collection. But the other reason I wanted to show him off is that, uh, number one, I'm getting ready to sell him. So it's not going to be in my collection much longer, but as you can see at the top of the card, there's quite a bit of damage. There is heavy spider veins and uh, increases all through this card. And you know, there you go. You can see it right there in the light. And same on the back. The back is even worse. Um, just a ton of, of card damage. And once I fell in love with this figure, of course, all rationality went out the door and I had to have him. And I'd been looking for him. And th the prices for this figure are just uh, crazy for, for one that's ungraded on the card. They're going for $70, $80. And uh, one night I happened to see one for sale, and it was only like half that, like 30 or 40 bucks. And I immediately bought it. Well, guess what? I made a huge mistake. The seller was using stock photos for the figure. And in little tiny n uh, notes in the description, for the auction. He said, this is just a representation of what you're going to get. You will get one on the card, but it's going to be heavily damaged. So, of course, I did not see that because I was too anxious, too excited to get what I thought was an awesome deal. And this was delivered to me. And of course, I was disappointed, but it was my own fault. It's my own fault. I didn't see, uh, I, I didn't read through all the, the proper description in the auction. And uh, I, I made a purchase decision uh, without really vetting it. And as a result, that's what I got. I got a really heavily damaged figure. And, you know, I was frustrated. 
And of course, uh, you know, I, I kept on, on the lookout for a, a better figure that was in, you know, much better condition than this, and not much was coming up online, or excuse me, on eBay. And so, as a last ditch resort, <clears throat> I got really frustrated one day, and I went on Facebook of all things, and I just typed in "graded AFA wide scope," and lo and behold, there was a seller in my town who had one. It was a, a local toy shop. He did not deal with graded figures very often, but apparently he had three, and guess what he had? He had a 9.0 graded wide scope. And of course, I immediately drove over there and bought it. And it was uh, priced very, very reasonably. There was one other one for sale on eBay by some moron in Portugal who wanted like $300 for it. And uh, I bought this for less than a third of what that guy was asking for it. So it's a uh, 9.0 grade, 2013 Hasbro G.I. Joe Club exclusive wide scope. And as you can see, it's just in fantastic condition. So I kind of took this as a life lesson that I have not forgotten. This happened several years ago, but this was a good life lesson for me to not rush into purchases. And as it relates to your own collecting and, and making good purchase decisions, that is one thing to look out for. One of the pitfalls is to not read the item descriptions in more detail. That sounds like common sense for most people. But believe me, I have none of that when it comes to collecting. And if I just read the, the auction description in more detail before clicking that buy it now button, it would have, uh, I would have avoided this whole situation. Luckily, I have it for sale right now, the, the, the damage figure for sale right now, and it's already up to about what I paid for it. So uh, not, not a huge financial loss, but all of it could have been avoided just by simply uh, reading the, the auction description. There are other pitfalls that, that, that I would recommend avoiding. Uh, as I mentioned in another video regarding my ASTI prototype, <clears throat> I do not purchase anything from China anymore. At one point in my collection, I had a massive import collection of Japanese uh, and Chinese uh, Transformers. And for every great purchase that I made in China of Transformers, two would never show up, or they were fraudulent listings, or they came heavily damaged. And so I, I no longer purchase anything in China. That's for you to decide, but my recommendation would be to not purchase any item that is located in China because it either won't show up, it's a fake listing, or uh, it, it, it's not properly packaged for the overseas shipment. Um, another pitfall to avoid uh, is if you see an item, especially a vintage Star Wars item, that is listed way too low for sale on eBay, chances are it's a fake. It's a fake listing. Uh, I've seen vinyl cape Jawas with a starting bid price of five dollars. That's mint on card. Those sell for ten to fifteen thousand dollars minimum. It's clearly a fake auction. And sellers have gotten very sophisticated now with their uh, with their fraudulent activities. Uh, one thing I do do is check the feedback for sellers to make sure that they are not a zero feedback seller. Zero feedback sellers are fake accounts, and they are to be avoided. But the, the amount of scammers that are out there now uh, starting accounts and then having dummy accounts provide uh, positive feedback so it looks like they have a thousand positive reviews and you're to assume that they are real sellers, well, those are all fake likes or, or fake positive reviews. And if you dig in and actually go to their profile page, you'll see that most of those positive, if not all of those positive reviews are by the same same account or or maybe one or two other accounts. So it's clearly a fake a fake listing. And like the good citizen that I am, I always uh, report those to, to eBay, but they do take some time to, to, to be taken off, 24 to 48 hours. So uh, if you have a particular item that you're looking for and you see that it's listed, listed way below market value, chances are it's a fake, a fake either a fake item or a fake seller, and they're just trying to grab your 30 bucks or whatever the number is, and have you deal with eBay's buyer protection plan after the fact uh, to get your money back, which <coughs> I, I do usually get my money back, or I've, I've always gotten my money back, I should say, from eBay. That, that, that is one of the positives of dealing with eBay, um, that uh, you, you do always get your money back if you file a complaint, but it does take a week or, or longer, 10 days, to, to finally get your money back. So um, those are some of the pitfalls that I, I, I now avoid uh, just by, by making sure that I'm, I'm buying from someone who is legitimate, that the item is legitimate and not a fake listing, 
or that it's located either here, here in the U.S. or you know somewhere in Europe. I've ha I've had a couple of problems with purchases in Europe, but that's that's mainly due to the mail service. Um, I've never had a problem with UK sellers uh, or uh, you know even in Spain, but I have had a number of problems from Denmark of all places. Uh, I don't know why. You Denmarkians or whatever you're called, Swedish is that right? No, Sweden. Sweden's different than Denmark, is it not? As you can tell, I failed geography class uh, when I was in high school. But you know, Denmark was the only only uh, country over in Europe where I've had problems of actually getting the item back. Um, but pretty much anywhere in Europe is safe. Japan is also fairly safe. I've, I've bought a number of GI Joe Takara backed Japanese figures that have always shown up on time and have always been properly packed. Uh, if the seller is legitimate and uh, and has good feedback, so those are just some what sounds like common sense. Uh, tips for buying on eBay, but it'll help you avoid the wide scope epic debacle that I went through uh, several years ago. But uh, I finally have decided to go ahead and sell this to fund some other purchases, and um, it won't go for much, maybe thirty to fifty dollars. But um, every dollar counts when you're in the collecting business and you have a tight budget. So, but uh, I made up for it. I, I found this, you know, AFA graded figure that's 9.0, and it looks great in, in my collection and. I finally did get my wide scope, so it's on to the next hunt. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll be back soon. Talk to you soon.